Well, you are doing good. Well, I'm taking good care of myself. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm taking good care of myself. When I tell people my age, they, they, they don't believe it, you know. So what is the age? Eight one. Eight one? Yeah. You look like someone who is 60. <laughs> <laughs> I, pa I passed 60 long ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I've taken you to one out of your age. Exactly. Wow. 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 You look really, really good. You look really good. Yeah, we have also in the family this uh, uh, genes of uh, longevity, oh, you know, okay. yeah, because uh, my dad died just about three years ago wow. at the age of 104 years, eight months. My grandfather was equally old, <laughs> over 98, if not 100. And then my, it's only my great grandfather whose life was uh, terminated through poisoning. But his father, Tobunya Otamaklu the first, lived for 118 years. Wow. Oh, yes. Oh, see. yes. And, uh, see, my grandfather lived for 122. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Uh, doc, doc, tell us, uh, how did your childhood story begin? Well, that's quite interesting. You know, I was born at the old Kolebo, as I was told by my mother and my father. In those days, we uh, Kolebo was I think, the biggest hospital in the country, you know. And there were, were quite a number of uh, uh, white uh, doctors. Normally, in our tradition, after a week, you are given a name. Oh, okay. But um, I think the doctors dictated that I was not that well to be released. But my mother was okay. So uh, the outdooring itself took place at Kolebo. The island, they had gardens there. Oh, for wow. those yeah, they, they, uh, when, when it was described to me, my parents, I was really impressed. They had a nice garden, you know. But they know our tradition. The white knows our yeah. tradition. And uh, within a week, the child must be given a name. And I'm proud to that. My dad and one of my late uncles, you know, no, my grandfather, and one of my late grand uncles, went to find out where do I really come from. They do it, you know. And they, they were told I'm just a, a what do you call it? A, a reincarnation or something? A com that's right. The reincarnation of Tobunya Otamaklu the first. That is why I have his name. So his okay. name is Nyahu Tamaklu. Tobunyahu Tamaklu. And so I, I, I was given his name Nyahu. Oh, okay. Now, his tool is Nyahu Tamaklu's tool. So I added Nyahu Tamaklu's tool to my name because I write his name. So I'm not surprised. I have grown to look like him. I, I, I get, I get yeah. shocked. When I was coming in and I saw the picture, I was like, ah, this is you. Only for <laughs> me to be told that. <laughs> that is my grandfather's grandfather. Is a picture you saw, the old man. It's right, it's right here. You can, you can, you can show it. Wow. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing. You are not the only one. Almost every journalist who comes here comments on that. In fact, when I was going to do the yeah. introduction, I almost yeah. said a traditional ruler. <laughs> 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 Don't wait, to my That belongs to me. Yeah, 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 he, he was a traditional ruler. Oh, okay. And uh, he was involved in a lot, lot of businesses. Oh, okay. He had business and properties all along. In the the eastern coast line, all the way to Benin. Oh wow! Oh so, yeah, he even got the he had properties in, uh, in Nigeria. But there is a street in Lagos called Tamaklu Street. Oh really? Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. And um, he had a mine in Chibi. So you can imagine. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow, he's a great, yeah, great man. Yeah, no wonder you have a great man. Oh, I have got him. I don't come in the fashion of what they do. And he was a warrior. 
Oh, okay. Oh, the, 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 that picture, the, the young picture, you yeah, see, yeah. that is him, the warrior. If your camera can catch it, yeah. you know, he was a warrior. And I have been, always been struggling to get some of his ancient items, like artifacts and other yeah. things. And when I got the picture, I was very much satisfied. He, well, he, he was in his full regalia. Yeah. Yes. And imagine where I got the picture from. It wasn't from Ghana. Nowhere in our archives could I found it. This picture came from Dresden in Germany. German archives. They had the picture of this man. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. So you can see that um, we, we really don't take certain things very serious okay. as Africans. And that's unfortunate, you know. But uh, tell us. Why did your people have to go and find out your generation? Oh, it's done in a lot of families. Oh, okay. uh, oh it, it, it's done by a lot. Of, they know, they want to find out your, your background, where you came, where you really come from. Oh. But that's their belief. And as I know what they said is what has happened today. Wow. Oh yes. Wow. Oh, what about yeah. your family education? How was it like? Oh, education. Okay. Oh, myself. Yes. Oh, in fact, I was born and bred in Accra. I was born in Accra, bred in Accra, schooled in Accra. Um, I, um, the, I started school at the Osu, Osu, sorry, I started school at the Presbyterian Primary School okay. at Adebraka. It's still there now, on the Kwan Nkrumah Avenue. In oh, those days, yeah. it used to be called um, High High Street. High Street. No, not High Street. They used to call Station Road. Oh, okay. We had okay. two streets running like, through Adaraka. Okay. Station Road and Boundary Road. Boundary Road is now what you call Kojo Thompson Road. Oh, okay. Now, Station okay. Road has become Kwame Nkrumah Avenue. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. It was there that we as kids, at about the age of seven or so, I remember vividly, when and Nkrumah I think it was released from prison or whatever it was, I don't know then. In those days, you know, he was so, you know, popular. And uh, they brought him to, from, I think from the prison, they brought him straight to the house of one of his close allies, K. Badema. Okay. Badema. Badema lived right opposite our school. And adjacent to our school was one Brahma, who was also in Kuma's man, okay. who was a minister in Kuma's government. Uh, one of the early ministers, you know. So that's where I had my basic training. Then from there I moved to also uh, Presbyterian Middle Boys Boarding School. Okay. Yeah, that's how I was there. Then from there, secondary school, I went to Zion College in Keta. And then so I... finally went to your place. Yeah. <laughs> I went to my place, but unfortunately, um, they were so strict that in those days you are not even allowed rather to speak the local language in the school. I don't know why. Wow. It was not only that school. There are a lot of schools. Well, I don't know. Maybe they wanted to make sure you grab the English language yeah. very well. And then after that, I had my university education at Charles University in Prague, okay. present Czech Republic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Came back after graduation. And having done my housewarship and everything, and uh, I wanted to join the army. And uh, so I the wrote, initial thing you wanted to do was to join the army. I was joining the army after 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 finishing medicine. Oh, okay. My, ah, so you finished uh, medicine in Czech Republic? Yeah. Okay. After I finished medicine, I decided to look. What I think one of the reasons was that my late uncle. Uh, Dr. Kwame Nyaho Tamaklo, who established Nyaho Clinic. When Nyaho has, Clinic? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That, 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 that was his work. Mm -hmm. and now, when I was, when I was in medical school, he had already established a clinic. Oh, and, and by, a long time. By, yeah, it's, a, it's quite an oak. I came to work there and, uh, with him, you know. In fact, initially I thought it was yours. No, not the whole. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I would say he did wonderfully well. 
and uh, he had a strength but well, it wasn't easy it wasn't easy at all unfortunately he was behind his desk working when he collapsed and died oh. mm -hmm. all because of the work he made the strength they put into it now um it was mainly because of him because by then before he set up the clinic he was the head of the military hospital he was also a soldier oh, okay by the military hospital in 37 oh yes yeah. now if you go there now you see tamako ward oh, yes. that was named oh, yes. after, that was named after him i see you follow me now when he retired from the military i think in 67 or 68 i can't remember very well now then he went into private practice and wanted this sort of modern clinic which also we call joint okay. sort of practice yes. so when he, even though the at that time the clinic was an outpatient clinic we had specialists coming down there. Oh, okay. Most of the special, if I can remember, the Professor Kwakumpo, Professor um, Taki of surgery, uh, uh, Colonel um, Jabano. These are all people I've worked with before. Uh, and I can name them Professor Drew, each one in his field, Professor Kwati, Wallachi, and you know. They all visited the place, so it became a very popular place within a short period. I see. Yeah, so that, that, that was that. So what, what happened to the military dream? Well, the military dream, I was asked to attend an interview. I was then in Europe. You know, Czech Republic is in Europe. So I was asked to report at the Ghana High Commission. Okay. Uh, you wanted to join the military service in Czech? No, 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 no. I wanted to join the Ghana military service. Yes. So I wrote to the Ghana military and I was asked to come for an interview. Oh, okay. In London. Now, I wasn't the only one. Quite a number of doctors came. I was 15 of us. And nurses, you know, nurses female nurses and uh, dentists also okay. and I remember vividly that um, at that uh, particular interview which in the military they call uh, uh, face a selection board that's how they call it in the military there were three military officers in their uniform who were white people one lady and two gentlemen one was a full Kenya, the other one was a lieutenant Kenya. Oh, okay. and then two Ghanaians the Ghanaians were uh, by then his rank was lieutenant lieutenant um, colonel Arnold Queen who later became General Queen and was the first commander of this country. He's still around. And I, I haven't seen him for a while. I have to, I have to look up for him. After this, you have to call him. <laughs> exactly. And uh, the other person was a major called Major Francis Ajemfra, who passed on recently. Oh, okay. Yeah, of some point. And this was wonderful. Now, Ajemfra also later became. A major general in the Ghana Armed Forces. So it was at uh, that uh, uh, particular interview, after they have talked to me, they asked me to wait. And uh, I did. Uh, they, they didn't tell me anything. So I was waiting. You have to respect others right from the word go. Yes. And then I noticed that uh, another doctor had joined me. Now, it turned out to be a gentleman by name, um, Corbina. Uh, Corbina wa was a dentist. Okay. Yeah. So, who were the two who were picked out of the lot that came there? Okay. Yeah. So, they asked us to go to 
um, Harley Street for, an, uh, for medicals and we went down there and after that uh, they asked us to come, come down to Accra. I came to Accra and went to military academy and all the medicines and what you think you know it will disappear within a second. <laughs> Because yeah, I would have told him, oh my God. But I enjoyed it. You see yourself being transformed from civilian life to military life. You feel it. How do you like? Um, it's, it's, you, you, I now understand why they always want younger people. You follow me? Yeah, yeah because it's, it's, it's quite stressful and strenuous, very rigorous, and uh, you know, all sort of thing that you do, you know, uh, going through swamps and whatnot, you know, climbing off ropes to heights that you can never think of, uh, jumping walls and uh, all sorts of things, being left in the bush. We were left, I remember, I was, I was then made a platoon commander, I were left down the Aburi Hill somewhere there, and we have to find our way all the way to Akropong with only a compass in the, in the forest. Oh, yes. But we're able to make it. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting one. Yeah. So, how many years did you serve in the military? My stay in the military was very brief. Uh, they can't be, it couldn't be more than three years. And it was full of, it was very eventful. In the space in, of in the, three years. Oh yes. But this was an area you were interested. So what did you get in? Oh well, I got into the military. By then, this country was so political, highly political. Buzi had been thrown out. I hold the general Chambon was in charge, and um, it was a military, you know. But some of us had a different sort of approach to certain things. I asked myself. The military, the role of the military really is not to rule civilians. That's not the role. But I read a book by one general, Alexander, you know, he was an officer and uh, he has uh, sort of specified clearly the role of the soldier. Okay. Now, interestingly, myself, I, when I left military academy, I served, I served briefly at um, 37 military hospital. Mm -hmm. Then I was put on a recruitment team. Very interesting. I want you to get this portion. It, it came out of a lot of things. A recruitment team to tour the whole country and then look for soldiers. I'm talking about. Uh, soldiers, not officers, potential, uh, not, not officers, soldiers, you follow me. Um, we visited all the regional capitals in Ghana. We ended up at Boku, Boku. by then Boku was not, uh, not, not Boku, we ended up at uh, Bolga. Bolga. Yeah, uh, yeah. by then it wasn't even a regional capital then, it wasn't, if my memories could serve me right. So they did this thing in order to balance regional representation. Okay. Very, very interesting thing. Yes, okay. not what is happening now. In order to balance regional, so we started from Ho, from Ho to Cape Coast, from Cape Coast to Sagandita Krade, and it went like that. Koforidua, this, this Kumansi. We kept on going, Tamale and And we had a true regional representation. So, when we were finished with the boys, I came back. I was sent back to, um, I remember very well, the officer in charge at that time was Lieutenant Colonel Ofosu Apia, okay. who when Jerry came, Jerry Rollins. Jerry Rollins came in, his second coming was in 81, eh? Yeah, 81. 81, he moved troops from Takrade to come and quell the the coup and things went wrong. Quite a number of people lost their lives, I remember very well. Now, when 
we finished with that assignment. I was assigned to one um, battalion of infantry. One battalion of infantry is at Michel Camp. I don't know if you know Michel Camp. Yeah, I know Michel Camp. Yeah. That's another very interesting camp. I was there as a resident doctor for the troops. Okay, so and because of your medical profession, oh yeah. You if you have just joined us, uh, this is Prime Tech, and we are speaking to Dr. Nyahunya Tomaklo, um, diplomat, uh, a politician, um, a doctor, an ex military man, and uh, a board member of a car house of uh, Doc. Yeah. Um, just before we we took a break, you were talking about how there was um, regional representation in the military service, mm -hmm. simply because the country wanted to have every single region represented in the military service. Absolutely. Why was this necessary? I think it was necessary because I am sure. Uh, national security might have noticed that. In those days, the national security was then a national security. They used to call them special branch. Okay. These are trained people, not this sort of wholesale thing we do now. Well-trained people. They really study what is happening. Um, they brief government about it regularly. There's one who, who has been coming on there some time, one of the experienced ones, I've forgotten his name, and who was uh, some of the early trained you know, officers. I think he's still around. He's, wrote, he's written a couple of books on national security. So I'm sure they were able to inform government that we have to go this way, even though it was under a military regime. Because by then, a champion was in power. Okay. You follow me? Yeah. Now, and that was the main reason why we went to all the regional capitals, so that we can have access to anybody who wants to join the army. In those days, too, it wasn't, I mean, you don't think about it. it, it, it Having to a, go through a process? No, 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 no. If you are declared. man to help no, you. No, 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 it doesn't exist. It didn't at all, I can assure you. What we are seeing now, just yesterday somebody sent, I don't even know him, sent me a short message on my, in my, my, my phone. So I said, may I know who is communicating with, with me? He gave out his name, I can show it to you. I said, he's looking for a job. Can you imagine it? I don't know him. I'm not in government. Not being government for years, so that tells you that there is difficult in this country, and there is difficult in this country. I mean, we should stop trying to 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 to, to shy away from that. There is real difficult in this country, and government has to sit up. So why did we get it wrong? Well, you see. I think it's a long journey. It's a very long journey. I say so because I think I have to come in with this. You know Kwame Pienim? Yes. After the killing of the judges, hmm? Um, during the era of the AFRC, Armed Forces Revolutionary Council, as they called themselves in those days. And mind you, on the council, that's, that's why I say, I say I'll tell you something. On the council were five soldiers that I examined them to be fit medically into the Armed Forces. And that was in 1974. I don't know whether you are following. I get it. I get it. How do I get to know? I have just been released from prison. Do I wanted to overthrow a champion myself and forward the officers? So we were just thrown into Osha Fort. We were there for years. Until our champion was removed, we had our freedom. And I just came out. I came out 
some couple of months, then 15th May, Jerry John Rollins. That was abortive, he was arrested. Now after that, I think a month later came March and four in his group. Uh, very good officer, that young boy. Very, very young boy. And uh, March and four in the group. Uh, then uh, my good friend, Captain uh, Henry Smith of one battalion of infantry, they brought in really the coup of that was successful in on June 4th. By then, I was, I have just been released from detention. So I, I had no hand in that one. But I was driving, I, did, I think by then, when I came out, when I came out, I, I came up with my uncle at Nyawo Clinic. So I was driving one time around the 37 military hospital, and I stopped by the roadside to talk to somebody. And these young men, when they came in, the soldiers, not the officers, the soldiers mostly, they used a, a vehicle they call Prince Gore. So they were in this prison guard. The prison guard came and stopped right in front of me. So I said, are the boys coming to arrest me? Of course. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> this one, I have no part of it. Then five of them got out of the vehicle and sharply saluted me. Good afternoon, sir. I said, good afternoon. Then I was amazed because I, I, I can't recognize any of them. Yeah. I'm talking about 74. We I took them in in 74, and the coup took place in 79. Eh? 79, yes. So it was 79, the second one was 81. Yeah. It was then that they disclosed to me that they passed through my hands when I was doing the recruitment. Oh, okay. I was amazed. So how come you wanted to overthrow a champion? Well, as a, a general Lensender said, the role of the military is not to rule the civilian. But African leaders have turned it the other way around. All coups in Africa are brought by the leaders themselves, are brought in by the leaders themselves. And when they go wrong, and they are being advised by national security, they don't listen. I'm telling you. If the role of the military is not to rule. Not to rule. That is what it is. That is what the, that is the traditional role of the military. But we have instances where the military has seized power in other countries. You know, Argentina and all these places. But even in Ghana, when Rawlings seized power. In Ghana, several power, times. Yeah. When Rawlings seized power. Oh, was several really times. And I'll tell, you, well, I'll tell you one interesting thing. Well, we have to be careful because this is really something that happened. By then, I have not even joined the army. And I was told this by late Lieutenant General Joshua Hamidu, a very good friend of mine, who was once Kufo's uh, National Security Advisor. You see, I'm saying this because I hope people will learn from it. Now, Joshua was having a chat with me. And then the question of how I came to power came up. This same question you're asking me. Yes. I asked him that question. And then he said, <laughs> Now, this is an interesting question. I said, well, why is that? He said, when a champion came to power, he was then the head of military intelligence. He was then the colonel. He has gone to play tennis when he had a call, that, that they are radio messaging, those, there was no cell phone, yes. radio, they are, that he should see the president elect immediately. Listen to me carefully. Now the president elect then was Professor Buzia. He was staying at uh, uh, that part of Accra, I've forgotten the name. So he drove there immediately. When he went in, the prof had a visitor. So he just waited. 
the colonel and the prime minister and the executive prime minister, you know the difference. Pre the prime minister yes. elect. Yes. Then later, who comes out of the prime minister's house? Lieutenant General Afrifa. Listen to me carefully. Now, he called in, and Afrifa, of course, Hamidou immediately paid respect to Afrifa. Afrifa was a general, yes. and he was a colonel. So he stood up and greeted him. And then he was ushered in to see the Prime Minister elect. And the Prime Minister elect said, Oh, what I wanted to discuss with you, I've got some of the facts from General Afrifa. He said, I want to make General Ch let no, he was then a Lieutenant Colonel. Yeah, a Lieutenant Colonel who had been given the command of five battalions of infantry, the most notorious battalion in this country. I've <laughs> served there before. <laughs> so I want to give you, I want to give him another command in addition to that. Listen to me carefully. And the command, the Prime Minister elect wanted to add to a champion's already important position was one brigade commander. When you are advised wrongly, this is what happens. The man is already holding uh, a, a, battalion, a battalion, a battalion that is a great confusion. You are going to add one brigade to it. One brigade means all the battalions in the southern sector. He's not going to be in charge. Oh, yes. And you know, we have lost some of the best officers. General Joshua made to advise him that he is of, of, from military intelligence. So anything on any officer is our way. I think you follow me. Yes. He told Professor Buzia that for A, B, C, D reasons, a champion cannot have that command. He, he told the professor, oh, Dr. Buzia is what he was a professor. He told him openly, professionally, if I put it. Yes. For A, B, C, D reasons, Don't give he can't be given a command, such a command. But because that's a high command. The prof said, he said, apparently, when General Frifa came there, it was the same topic that was discussed. And the general gave the green light. The green light to the Prime Minister elect. And a champion was made brigade commander. First as acting brigade commander. One battalion commander and one brigade commander. These are things that people must know. It will take three years and you have three books here. Now tell me nothing about it. I get it. It's <laughs> me that he was handed the power to, to take any decision. He was handed the power but to the wrong person. There were better officers there. I want you to understand me well. There were better who were professional officers who would not remove what do you call it? Um, a, a, a democratically democratic elected government. Yeah. Maybe for one simple reason that they come from the same area. These are some of the things that's why I say. So it even happens. at that, it happens. Even at that time, we have to go nationwide to look for soldiers. You follow me? But if you also overthrew a champion, why are you not going to rule the people or you're going to overthrow him and give it back to uh, uh, democratic uh, uh, leadership? But that is a problem. Look at the number of coup d'etat we've gone through. Right down from the time of General Kotoka. Yes. 
kutoka Ankara Ankara Afrika uh, uh, Yes Ankara Afrika Then a champion came in Jay Rollins came in when Rollins was in, in fact before Rollins came they have been serious our, our group was there too myself and George Menyela we wanted to remove uh, uh, to a champion so you ask yourself, why so? And the reason is quite simple. Politicians fail to do the right thing. <laughs> but do soldiers do the right thing? Do military do oh, so the right thing? Where, why Achembo was removed, listen to me carefully, was he got soldiers more involved in civilian life. And soldiers don't want to be involved in civilian life? No. You'll be surprised, no. A good, well-trained officer would not like to be, be involved in civilian life. Our chairman appointed some of them, managing directors, this, this, this. No. No. A good soldier, and we can cite some of them. They're some of the good soldiers. See. You follow me? So, what one should do always is to keep your eyes open. And, and also yes. make sure you listen to the advice coming from national security. Know what we have now. So what you have now is not fit for purpose? Oh, look. look what, what I will say, eh? we might have gone through rough times if we have been years back with the military. Let's be frank about certain things. So Ghana would have been better to no, that, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. What is happening now, if it had been years past, would have called for coup d'etat long ago. That's the point that, that I'm saying. Are you suggesting that the current that we've had in this country, yeah. say, since we became a democratically, or since we had democratic elected leaders, mm -hmm. the way they fled the country, years past, they were Absolutely. Absolutely. Only a fool will not recognize. And a true soldier will know that. Know that. There are people who feel the same way I feel. I'm not interested in military government because I know the harm they bring to, to, to the country. But for heaven's sake, when you are running a nation, run the nation with integrity. That's what I'm saying. So the past leaders or the, the leaders of this democratic government, they failed? No. You know on what basis Nkuma was removed? With all the wonderful work that he did for yes. this country. They say it wasn't democratic. That was the basis. Nkuma was removed because there is the argument that he has set up a one-party state and this and that and that. That's when Kuma was removed. Now look at what we are going through now. Are we worse off? We are worse off. If that is what you want to hear. We are worse off. Look at what happens during elections. People being killed. Look at the behavior of so-called militia. I mean, they are, they are, they are legion. I can't, I, can't, I can't count them. Look at the infractions. Infractions. Not just from ordinary people, but from ministers. I mean, I mean, I mean you see, when, when people fail to see this, this, it amazes me. I mean, there are serious things happening in this country. Apart from the mess in which we are with the economy. Recently, look at what happened. A huge amount of money reported stolen from a former minister's house. I mean, I mean, I mean this I think that, that will get the soldier crazy about 10 years, 15 years, 20 years ago. I'm telling you. I am telling you. Wow, that's quite an interesting one. But I, I, there's a certain question I want to ask. Yeah. Um, in as much as we are having 
a conversation about your life story and all that. But some of these things, they, they become quite relevant. But before I ask that question, if a military soldier wants to um, take over, mm -hmm. does he have conversation with other military soldiers to be on standby, or how, how does it happen? <laughs> You, 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 because we've had too many proofs. So, <laughs> I, I think so, so. Let's let's say um, let's say when uh, a champion wanted to overthrow Prussia, mm -hmm. probably he told Dr. Nyakulo to, to be on standby. I want to take this action. Then he gets let's say the people. No, telling so, somebody to be on a standby doesn't mean you disclose your intention to the person. That these are two different things. But so, so the people within your circle, you, you have tell a them circle. The plan. Yeah. yeah, of course, you, you, you have to start from somewhere, and there must be a new clause. Oh, okay. uh -huh. Maybe one, two, three people. You follow me? If they agree on an issue, then the conspiracy starts building. So if it is, for me. if it is with, yeah. and, and, and then, and then dep it, a lot depends on the leader and the command he's holding. Oh, okay. That's very important. Okay. You follow me? Yes. Uh -huh. The leader. That's why I said, Hamid advised the prime minister that Achampong wasn't the material for that hand yet. You follow me. But the likes of Hamid too was there. When he when a champion did that, and why did they not disagree with him, but still allowed him to proceed and No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm speaking as a civilian, I don't understand these things. You know, a coup has been done by five battalions of infantry led by a champion. Huh? Yes. And you were supposed to be The interesting thing about that coup was that Ajemo was the head of the battalion and at the same time head of one brigade. Yes. That's a strong position. Now, um, one battalion of infantry in Tema, Michel Camp, yes. is headed by a lieutenant colonel. The second in command was a major. He recently passed on. Ah, so it means that you must have all these people I'm, in I'm, I'm telling you, you were, we're asking how a champion formed the group. He didn't talk to the commander. Do, do you understand me? Yes. He spoke with the second in command. When the commander is not there, then the second in command. command takes charge. He spoke with the second in command, who was a major. I told you the commander should be a lieutenant colonel. And there was a commander there, but he didn't trust the commander. So he spoke with a lieutenant, he spoke with a, a major. And the major got the trick. Ah, so, uh, and not just, listen to me, it's, it's not just, it's not just uh, Michel Camp. All the other battalions that he attached. Second battalion at Aprendu, Takrade. He spoke with the second in command. I don't want to mention the other. Oh, yes, I get it. Yeah? Signals he spoke with the nursing command and other places, so that is a new clause. So when he moved, so his school um. was a bloodless school, he just came, announced that the government is overthrown for ABCD reasons, and that was that. And he stayed almost for eight years in power. That's quite an interesting one. But talk to me briefly on, on, on this one. You were talking about how the governance of the country today, if that happened many years ago, probably there would have been um, one so you're getting angry and saying, no, we, can, we cannot continue to allow this, excuse my language, nonsense to happen. Prior to the, the elections of 2016, you had a warning for Ghanaians. Would you say you have vindicated that you want Ghanaians not to give this government power, but oh. Ghanaians went ahead and voted for them? Are you vindicated that what you just said, like you said the example of a former minister allegedly having money in her house, kind of suggests that there is um, mismanagement of the country and that we gave power to the wrong people? 